everyone, my name is Tendiwe Moreau and this is my channel. We're currently going through a series of photography basics for beginners where we discuss the complex photography concepts as simply and as easily as possible. So today we're going to be talking about white balance. But before I get there, I want to say if this is your first time viewing the channel, thank you for watching. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this every Monday and Thursday. So before I can even begin to discuss white balance, I need to talk about something called Kelvins. And what are Kelvins? Kelvin is a measurement of the warmth or the coolness of the color in your photographs. So a very basic example would be, have you ever stood under one of those yellow light bulbs that you put in the house? When you stand next to it and you look at your skin, of course your skin looks more yellow. Well, on the flip side, have you ever stood next to a fluorescent bulb, so one of those long white light tubes and if you stand under there you notice that your skin is not very yellow maybe it leans more towards a more bluish or cooler color so the warmth or the coolness of the images is what we refer to as kelvins and in your camera we call it white balance so white balance determines how warm or more yellow orange your pictures are or how cool that is how blue your pictures are why is white balance even important why should i care about white balance White balance is important to us as photographers because it helps us communicate a mood and a feeling in our photographs. So let's say I shoot somebody on a cold day and I want to communicate to the viewer that the person, the subject in the image is feeling really cold. If I take that image of somebody who's supposed to be looking cold and make it really warm and yellow, the viewer may not instantly think cold. But if I make the image very blue, you instantly relate blue to cold water or to snow or just to a fridge, something really cold. So that would communicate the feeling of the subject feeling cold. So white balance is an important part of communication in photography. So there's several ways you can control white balance in your camera. Firstly, you could let the camera do it automatically and make all decisions based on the color temperature of your images for you. Or you can use one of the presets that the camera has. And some of these are like, white balance for shade, white balance for fluorescent lights, iridescent lights, white balance for cloudy days or direct sunlight. Or thirdly, you could decide to tell the camera that you're going to make all the decisions about white balance and actually using Kelvin's set the number you want your white balance to be. To change the white balance on your camera, this varies from make and model, the make and model that you use, but universally on every camera, your white balance is denoted by the, num the letters, <laughs> WB, which stands for white balance, of course. And to change it, you, you would press the white balance button and then use a dial on the top of your camera to put the setting you want, okay? You can also change your white balance in the menu, in your shooting menu. So all you need to do is go to menu, go to your shooting menu, and then scroll down until you see something saying white balance. And then from there, you can go ahead and change it. I'll begin with the easiest white balance preset on your camera, which is the auto mode. And here you're telling the camera, I don't want to make any decisions about the color temperature in my pictures. You make all of them. I find that the auto mode works pretty well most times, except when the light changes, I find it tends to get confused and it may not be as quick to adapt to the changes. So let's say you're shooting in direct sunlight and then suddenly the sun goes behind a cloud. I found that sometimes my white balance won't make the change or it may not be able to estimate very well what the correct white balance should be now that that big change has taken place. So I avoid using auto, but it is a good option for you if you don't want to think about white balance at all. The one challenge with auto white balance is that if you're looking for consistency in the colors across all your images, it may sometimes change when you don't want it to change. So you may want to use other white balances if you want each and every shot to have the same color temperature. The next white balance preset that your camera offers you is direct sunlight. The color temperature of direct sunlight is 5200 Kelvin. So when you put your camera on the white balance preset for direct sunlight, this is what your Kelvin would be. This is a Kelvin I actually shoot at almost 80% of the time. I find it works well across a range of scenarios. I prefer to use my white balance in the manual mode, but more on that later. All you need to know for now is direct sunlight is 5200 Kelvin and it's designed knowing that sunlight is a bit more yellow than other types of light. So this leans slightly more towards the warm tones. The next white balance preset on your camera is flash. 
and if you've used flash before you know that it tends to put a very cold hard light on your subject so in the flash white balance preset it's slightly more kelvin than direct sunlight that's 5400 kelvin and that's because manufacturers know that when you use a flash they may need to warm up the image a bit so that people's skin tones don't look colder than usual this is a great preset to use of course if you're using your flash the cloudy white balance preset is designed for when you're shooting under cloud cover and cloud cover generally offers a cooler temperature in terms of the light as opposed to a sunny day on a sunny day the light leans more towards yellow on a cloudy day we're closer towards the blue tones so in this preset manufacturers actually make the white balance lean even more to the warmer side of things so that your subjects don't look too cold or too blue the cloudy white balance preset is particularly good to use when you want warmer skin tones and you want more natural looking skin tones so if you're doing portraits for example it might be a good place to start at the shade preset is designed with the assumption that you're shooting a subject under shade but under the open blue sky so the image will be cooler than maybe shooting in direct sunlight so for this reason the shade preset warms up the colors in your image the fluorescent white balance preset is designed in situations where you'll be shooting under fluorescent lights which are the long white tube lights that you see indoors and those give a very cool light so it's designed to warm up the images the incandescent white balance preset is designed for your typical household light bulbs so the very yellow light bulbs so it, it cools down the image to counteract some of the yellow tones of the light to give you more natural looking skin tones and environments this is a good preset to use if you're shooting indoors in low light. So if I'm not using my flash and I'm shooting in a situation where people are indoors or under fairy lights, this is a really good preset to use. The last white balance preset on your camera is denoted by the letter K and this is a manual mode where you make the decisions about what you want your white balance to be. To use this mode, you must know the range of colors on the Kelvin scale so you can decide if you want to make your image warmer or cooler. I prefer to use this particular preset because it gives me full control over the lighting. Sometimes, let's say I'm shooting in direct sunlight and I actually want my images to be warmer than they, the camera thinks they should be. Shooting in manual mode will mean I have the control to do that as opposed to the direct sunlight mode where the camera will get the correct white balance but it may not be what I want. One of the big benefits that manually setting your white balance has is situations where the lights are different colors. So for those of you who do event or wedding photography, people are very fond of those lights that have color gels on them or their LEDs that are colored. So they could be a very vibrant, saturated red or blue or green or purple. And in a situation like that, the light is such a strong color, it messes with how your camera would read white balance. So using your camera in the manual white balance mode would allow you then to just use your own discernment to decide this red light shining into my image is actually affecting it this much, but no more. The camera could get confused and decide that the image is so red, it could make it too cold now. So it could make your white balance way too blue. And then the skin tones in your image look unnatural. So manual mode allows you control in situations where your camera just won't be able to make a decision. Your white balance can be changed not only in your camera, but also on your computer when you're editing the images. However, to do this, I would encourage you to shoot your images in RAW so that the color change can be more natural. If you want to know more about the RAW file format, you can click on this link to watch the episode where I give more information about it. But of course, it's always best practice to try and get your white balance as accurately as possible in your camera because Photoshop doesn't always fix everything. So learn to shoot right in camera and then just tweak in Photoshop. The easiest way I can demonstrate white balance is actually using this video. So I'm going to change the color settings on that camera to show you what each preset kind of looks like. This is what the video looks like on the automatic white balance preset. This is what the video looks like now in the incandescent white balance preset. If you use white, your white balance on the fluorescent setting, this is what it looks like. This is white balance for direct sunlight. This is a white balance preset for flash. And this is a cloudy white balance preset. The shade white balance presets. And then this is on manual mode, which is what I usually use my camera on. I hope that was helpful in showing you how white balance can affect the mood and the feeling of your image and how it really can add color to your images. 
Sometimes you may be shooting in scenarios where if you change a white balance preset, you may not really notice a difference. So don't panic. Depending on the situation you find yourself in light-wise, that may or may not happen. Thanks for watching. I hope that video was helpful in explaining what white balance is and how you can use it and when you should use which preset. If you have any comments or questions about white balance or even just photography in general, please post them in the comment section below so we can get a conversation going. If this is your first time viewing my channel, thank you for watching. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this every Monday and Thursday. If this is not your first time, you are awesome. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your photography journey. Any gear that I've mentioned in this video is listed in the description box below so you know where to get it. If you want to interact with me on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and on my website, www.tandiwemoro.com. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it so I know what you want to hear more about. That's it for now. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.